Good morning. Good morning, ma'am. And Maria Dr. Teresa Ricardo Pang from Nolasco. the Bureau of Learning Resources. And Dr. Marlene Ferrido, uh, from Deputy Director, PIDS, Deputy Dr. Rosario G. Manasan, Development Studies. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, ma'am. Dr. Aniceto Orbeta, Jr. Good morning, sir. From Ateneo de Manila, Ms. Maria Filipino, Jennifer Marlene Percepcion, Percepcion. Dr. Alan Senior Math Faculty Member, Ateneo Senior High School. And Dr. Marilyn Balagtas. Mr. Ryan Bruce, Registrar. From the University of the Philippines, Ms. Dr. Maria Teresa Lindsay Bustos. Good morning, ma'am. And Ms. Dr. Amelia Ricardo, Dicojo, Program Nolasco, Officer, Ateneo Center for Educational Development. And Dr. Marlene Ferrido, Deputy Director, from Philippine Business UP, for Education, Center for Ms. Love Basilote, Good morning, morning, ma'am. And Mr. Cedric Forbes. From, from Ateneo Philippine de Manila, Science Ms. School, Maria Dr. Jennifer Concepcion, Senior Math Faculty Member, Ateneo Senior High School. From Public Mr. School Ryan Bruce, Bruce Ms. Jocelyn Halili, Master Teacher 2, Malinta, Ms. Maria Malinta Teresa School. Lindsay. Ms. Edita Herrera and Ms. Amelia Dicojo, uh, Program Ms. Officer, Ateneo Center for Education de la Cruz, and Ms. Levi Vergara. From Philippine Business for Education, Ms. La Basilote, good morning, ma'am. And of course, from the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD, Mr. From Andrea Philippine Science High School, Schelle. Dr. Lawrence Madriaga, Campus Director, Philippine Science Thank High School. Thank you. Thank you, Comsec. Um, again, welcome. Uh, thank you for your participation and your presence uh, for today. Um, the centers are very concerned with the uh, results of the PISA. In fact, uh, uh, four centers filed uh, four resolutions, all pertaining to the results of the PISA. And, Senator, and these are Senator Binay, Senator Angara, of course, Senator Marcos, and yours truly. And Senator, thank you, thank you also gave a privileged um, speech again, also welcome. concerning uh, about for your the results of your presence uh, visa. Uh, for today. Um, today, um, uh, we have one centers are very concerned uh, with very the important uh, results focus. of the PISA. And this is to in find fact, uh, solutions in order uh, for to centers improve the performance of our students uh, and in turn improve all the outcome to the results of our of the PISA. next PISA results. And, Senator, um, and these are Senator Binay, Senator I think Angara, all of us know the results Senator already Marcos by now. And um, the Bed gave an extensive and presentation Senator in 2019. Grace Paul also gave a privileged and, uh, speech I've read a lot also of concerning about of analysis the results uh, pertaining of the to PISA. the results of the PISA. Um, today, but what is uh, we have very important uh, and we have to bear this very in mind. Is next year, we'll be taking the PISA to again find solutions in, in order to improve and without the performance of our students doing any and in turn improve significant the reforms of our next PISA results. Especially that will be felt on the ground. Um, uh, don't expect I think uh, all of us know the results year. already by so now. So today, um, we will be Deped focusing on the solution. And, in 2019. Uh, we also want and, to uh, hear from a lot the different stakeholders, other suggestions and other uh, but what is that the, very important? The government to bear this in mind. Next the year, we'll be taking the PISA again. From the legislative side, uh, we want to hear and those. Without because our doing responsibilities to make sure that significant reforms uh, is made available, especially to, uh, that will uh, be felt on the ground. The solutions that uh, will don't be proposed. Expect, uh, and amazing of course, if we need to year. enact more so today legislation, we will be focusing on the solution to improve the performance. Uh, of we also want to we will, hear we will from the different so. stakeholders. So with uh, that, other again, let's other focus suggestions and on other the solutions, uh, solutions uh, that and then uh, how to implement the government can employ timetable of performance. We want tangible from the legislative side. We want to hear those from the hearing. Today. Responsibility so that, to make sure uh, that like funding, funding here uh, is made available to, from uh, one of the, to, to uh, the solutions that will be proposed. The, um, and, and of course, if resolution we need to calling for legislation uh, and or other legislation Thank to you very improve much, the performance Chairman, of our students, to the we, will, we will be doing so. All here. So with that, again, to let's focus and thank on the you solutions again for coming. Uh, um, and then how to implement the solutions. Of course, timetable of the solutions. We want tangibles. Uh, the, uh, for submitting uh, themselves from the, to the hearing today. Last year, so we with that, uh, we'd like to also hear an opening statement from Kayo. one of the Pero, uh, um, authors firstly, of the me, uh, uh, my resolution calling for to be an, uh, an inquiry on the PISA results. Thank, Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and welcome to the Deputy Representatives all here. Many of you are familiar to us. And thank you once again for coming. Firstly, may I just say that firstly to congratulate the teacher parents for submitting themselves to the PISA yung one last to four year, natin, we finally got the results na natin uh, good or bad, yung at least sumali naman kayo. Curriculum, Pero, um, uh, learning let environment, me, uh, events my concern. But what these seem are to the be age age old uh, solutions which didn't na work lumabas in the past and are unlikely to work in the future. Um, secondly, naman, parang, um, 
In addition to the poor uh, natin, wala bang, uh, scores, data gathering, uh, let analysis, me just say that there are patterns in equities in the groups sa mga education, parents, even students. within our country. Dahil, so, yung kita one to four natin, yung, uh, inequity between na natin NCR and, and the rest of the provinces, urban to rural, female uh, to male, learning and environment, so multi-stakeholder. So, parang natin these are kung the anong dapat natin gawin moving forward. Last year, during the budget, you asked for an additional 30 billion. Secondly, on a capital budget, you asked for an additional 30 billion. Secondly, on a additional 30 billion. Secondly, on a capital budget, you asked for an additional 30 billion. Secondly, to the, the performance poor, uh, that didn't scores. seem to be commensurate. Uh, let me just say that there are patent inequities so, in the this year. Education, uh, even within our country. Plano so, buo, kitang kita rin yung inequity and, uh, between NCR and the rest of the problems problem natin urban ngayon. To rural, Thank you. Female to male Thank you, uh, so Senator so Marcos, so for that uh, so, very natin kung anong blunt dapat and natin direct gawin. Uh, forward last year during analysis. the budget, and, uh, you asked correct, for an no? additional uh, 30 billion. We only gave 20 uh, on account of the performance that didn't seem to be commensurate. Uh, a lot of those requested. are so sana quite this year, old and uh, rehashed uh, solutions. Mabuo, but uh, I believe those are and, uh, solutions that we need to, to uh, make sure Thank you. that it's actionable Thank you, uh, with Senator time Marcos frame for and that, with uh, very uh, the corresponding blunt budget. and direct uh, Yung sa teacher analysis. Kasi, and uh, you're correct, no? we uh, look at the four uh, proposed solutions aking under the Sulong Edukalidad. Uh, Unlike a lot the of rest those of ASEAN are determined quite to improve the quality of basic education uh, in order to raise the level but, uh, of the entire system. But I believe those are solutions that we Vietnam need to, para to uh, make sure that it's actionable sila sa with time frame and with uh, the corresponding ang budget. Nila, PhD ng PhD yung sa teacher upskilling uh, kasi, maraming theories sa uh, educational improvement, doon sila tumuto bago pa ayusin yung mga eskwelahan. Medyo radical yung experiment nila and I'm not recommending it Unlike the rest of ASEAN, all I'm saying is that we do the quality need of basic out of the education box, in novel, order to raise creative, the level of the entire system. Solutions. Otherwise, we'll be stuck Vietnam, in the same place. Pas I truly agree, eh, um, uh, Senator Marcos, sa that we need to have out of the box PhD. and something that we can implement right away. Ang nila, you know, because PhD PhD. Uh, time is against uh, us uh, uh, for the next uh, 2021 uh, PISA examination. So we need something that we can implement right away. We're not recommending it in any way. All I'm saying is that we do need out uh, of the this box morning. novel, um, with creative, that, uh, we also innovative uh, solutions. Otherwise, from we'll be the stuck OECD. in the same place. And this is, uh, I truly agree, Mr. Um, Andreas. Uh, Senator uh, Marcos, Schiller. that we need to have out of the box and something that Schiller. we can implement right away. And um, uh, Mr. Andreas, is against uh, good, us. good morning uh, to uh, next, uh, you. Uh, I understand that it's already uh, PISA examination. 30 so a.m. Something that we can in implement France? right away. Uh, low hanging fruit, so to speak. Yes, uh, that's the objective of so, uh, our hearing. Uh, for this morning. Well, thank, thank you for um, participating that, uh, in this very important uh, uh, hearing. I'm here with Senator OECD, Marcos, who's also is, very concerned uh, with Mr. Results. Andreas. And we invited uh, OECD to shed light on the results. And also Schiller. at the end, uh, again, no, and, let me um, put emphasis, we want to Mr. hear Andreas, solutions uh, also. Good, good morning. Uh, solutions uh, you. That we can I understand uh, that it's ready uh, uh, quickly. So we first go into in the PISA France. results in the eyes of the OECD and later give us your recommendation. So, well, thank, thank you for participating in this very important uh, hearing. I'm here with Senator Marcos, who's also very concerned with the PISA results. And we invited OECD to shed light on the results. And also at the end, I, again, no, let me put emphasis, we want to hear solutions also, actionable solutions that we can uh, implement uh, uh, quickly. So we first go into PISA results in the eyes of the OECD and later give us your recommendation. Yes, thank you Baseline level of skills, there's many of the IPs are fine for the Philippines, the region, apply that to the crack. And sometimes the serious point I want to highlight is that you not to have, um, and this is a very large part of the PISA process that requires students to speak in the Philippines to actually apply knowledge. 
be too big to test because the world economy and they have the price materials and the business actually even more than we have done. But the great strength of the divide. So this is when states were asked to create the supply and back show that is and sometimes it moves if you according to business do not do well. One of the highlights is that do not do well. And this is a very large part of the that requires that require students to stay in the Philippines and actually apply and we submit in the test because the world economy and they have the price material in the US actually it is all of the well. But the great strength of the divide. So this is when states were asked to create the Philippines. Uh, according to the uh, 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 uh,
Again, if you look through the top performing education systems in your neighborhood, is China, is Singapore, you can see that, that teachers will spend more time than teachers in the Philippines to work with students outside the classrooms, to give students individual support, to really know their students. So that kind of student-teacher relationship is much stronger in those high-performing systems than we find it in the, in the Philippines. So these are just a few pointers for possible improvement. This is the way we see this. These are results uh, from the OECD. Once again, if you look at the investment in the Philippines, it makes an education uh, which is quite low, actually it's the lowest amount of, of the countries being compared, and the performance is sort of not so much out of line with this. Much of the performance variation lies within schools, not between schools, not between social groups, not between genders. So that much of this comes down to the instructional system, students not being familiar with ways of thinking and the creative use of knowledge and uh, disciplinary plan. So I'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have. What um, changes would you recommend for the method of instruction so that we can focus on those? Yeah, and I think what is important is that teachers spend more time uh, to uh, an effort to give students time for reflection, that students have to solve problems on their own and are guided by the teacher in solving those problems rather than just you know being uh, given specific content that they have to memorize, which students in the Philippines do quite well. But I think uh, instructional methods that give more ownership to learning to students uh, instructional method that reward success of students. The fact that you know growth mindset is not very well pronounced. I think those are factors where I'm looking uh, at invest, sort of giving teachers uh, more opportunity, more responsibility to foster uh, advanced learning strategies. Uh, for example. Uh, helping students to control their learning, setting meaningful learning goals, monitoring their learning progress. Uh, uh, if students are just the recipients, passive recipients in an instructional environment, they will probably not develop the kind of knowledge, skills, attitudes, and values that are quite important for success in life and for success in PISA. This clearly needs an overhaul of our methods of teaching. Um, how do we jump start this effort to change um, our instructional methods and train the teachers in a more collaborative, innovative, open-minded, problem-solving way? I think that's a very good question. You know, uh, you might find some of the answers in some of your neighboring countries. If you look to Vietnam, for example, or if you look to China, what you see there is that it's not just about sending teachers back to university, giving them formal education and training. A lot of the teacher learning actually in these countries happens in the school. Basically, they have established strong professional learning communities. A very powerful method for teacher learning, for example, is classroom observation. If you observe the class of a teacher who does particularly well, if you have a strong collaborative culture in the schools where teachers uh, analyze and study lessons together, where they videotape lessons and then you know use and and and, and uh, dissect them to see where the strengths and weaknesses are. It's the professional collaboration in the school that, in our experience, is the best way to jumpstart the process. Because if you just rely on universities, you know, you send teachers to, to universities, it will take you a long time, you will only reach a few teachers, it's not enough to jumpstart the process. And in a way, I think Vietnam is actually a really interesting country because in less than, you know, five, six years, they have tra fundamentally transformed methods of teaching through building strong professional learning communities in schools, also, you know, giving teachers recognition for good work. This is also very important that you can highlight, you know, where you see teaching excellence and then give those teachers a bigger role in mentoring other teachers, in supporting other teachers, in developing more lessons. We also find that, you know, better collaboration across schools can be important. One thing you can do as government is find incentives to attract the most talented teachers 
Through the most challenged peace goals that have seen very well done in the province of Shanghai in China, where you know all career paths of teachers are always leading to this advantage. So I do believe it's the in school methods of improvement, uh, strengthening a combination of professional autonomy and the collaborative culture that's the most promising way to, to jumpstart that process. Thank you very much. That's a very valuable insight, and certainly one which we haven't tried. Mr. Andres, I have a few questions. No? And uh, the piece is meant to um, benchmark and also find good practices or best practices from other countries by, uh, by, by ranking the performance in order. Um, my, my question is, the Philippines is a very centralized system when it comes to delivering education. No? Uh, if you look at, the, put this in context, we have 27 million students being uh, taught by central government. We have close to 800,000 teachers you know, employed by government. Does a centralized system have anything to do with the performance of students? It, it, this is in comparison to other systems, no? to other systems all over the world. Yeah, that question is uh, difficult to answer. You do have some centralized education systems that uh, are very high performing, like you know Japan, and uh, some centralized education systems that have uh, less good results. I think the really is not so much you know, the central steering. I think that can be quite a useful framework and powerful framework. What is more lacking, according to the PISA data in the Philippines, is uh, sufficient local autonomy in the schools, basically, to give teachers to go and schools more ownership over implementation. You know, but it's a fair point that the government should set the curriculum, you know, down and be clear about what students should go and what they can do. But it's also important for schools at the very local level to interpret that and basically translate it into the context of their students and their, and their, and their teachers. So I think the combination of, you know, a central sphere uh, when it comes to a great home, when it comes to climate and so on, and at the same time, local flexibility, encouraging, you know, uh, initiative in the school, recognizing very good performance when teachers are doing a particularly good job, finding ways to you know, elevate them in the talent of the teaching profession when schools do a good job. One of the things, for example, even in centralized systems like, you know, uh, China, what you can see is uh, that they are always airing high and local quality school. If you are a would anyone from the Dep Ed uh, like to inquire as well so that we can get free advice in the dead of night? Thank you. And we welcome, of course, Secretary Briones to the Senate once more. I would like to inquire again about the uh, time that you mentioned teachers in high performing educational systems spend with their students outside of the classroom. How is this time best deployed? Yeah, that, that's a good question, actually. If, 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 if you look at the overall volume of time, it's quite, the Philippines is quite an average country. Actually, students at the age of 15 years spend an average time learning in school. But uh, uh, in, when it comes to out of school learning time, most of that is either tutoring or it's homework. What we do not see very well developed in the Philippines is school supported in the learning time. And that can be quite important if you want to more foster responsibility and independence of student learning. It can be a good thing to give teachers more time to support students outside the classroom. I give you an example. If you're a teacher in Shanghai, you spend only about, you know, 11 to 16 hours teaching per week. You actually teach much less than a teacher in the Philippines. But you work actually more hours than a teacher in the Philippines. And the rest of the time teachers spend, you know, working with parents. They spend working with each other. They spend working with individual students to support students in, you know, preparing their homework, making them responsible learners. So what you can see is in any high-performing countries, uh, teachers spend less 
time in the classroom and more time supporting students, you know, outside the classroom or their families. Sort of in they are performing countries the teachers not only a teacher, they are also a social worker, they're also a psychologist, they're also a mentor, they're also a coach, a facilitator, a much uh, broader role of teachers, which is actually quite importantly related to learning best. What we see in the Philippines is that the teachers rule a role is mainly confined to the classroom, at least what I can see from the visa data. Of course, you know your country much better than I can see it through this data. Yes, that's correct. I think uh, we burden our teachers with all sorts of other tasks involved with the national government, from ele election surveys, from preparing fiestas, from all sorts of things that have nothing to do with students or the educational system. Um, would you recommend, for example, the traditional extracurricular activities like debating clubs, science clubs, and so on? Or are you saying that we should provide the students with their individual projects? that they choose, obviously. Yeah, I think both can be important. I think uh, extracurricular activities, uh, if they are well organized and academically related, uh, you know, a lot of extracurricular work actually is not so much academically oriented, and I'm not sort of convinced that would help the Philippines. I, I think having extracurricular activities, like, for example, giving students opportunities to uh, uh, do their own projects, support them, um, having, you know, work in the laboratory, uh, connecting the world of work in the world of learning, giving young people experiences in the world of work. I think those kinds of things, uh, uh, extracurricular activities, can be very meaningful. It can also be that students uh, have more time to, uh, you know, do their own projects in the school, project-based learning that is supported and facilitated by teachers can be a good means the various ways that uh, the Philippines could deploy to, and, and so teachers could have a role beyond the classroom that is academically oriented. Sometimes extracurricular activities is, you know, things like sports or social activities, they can also be important, but they will not help to improve the academic performance in the Philippines. Uh, thank you very much. I uh, have a specific uh, problem that uh, perhaps uh, uh, reflects China, Mexico, and other out-migration countries. Many of the children in our educational system have parents overseas, so there's an absentee mother. It's resulted in uh, dropout rates. It's also resulted in uh, diminishing academic scores. So uh, the teacher is required to perform a role that really isn't hers. Um, to be the mother in that family, or maybe both parents in that family. What can we do to uh, uh, lift that burden a little bit? Yeah, you know, I think um, that, that, that question gets asked almost in every country. You know, where does the role of the teacher end and where does the role of the family begin? I think what we see quite clearly across countries is that schools in general have to take more social um, more social responsibilities. In many countries, you can see teachers actually becoming very actively engaged with parents. Uh, and there are two ways to achieve this. I mean, one is to assume directly responsibilities from families. That is actually, like in the Philippines, happening in more and more countries. Uh, many parents, you know, work. They don't have the time or they don't spend the time uh, to support their children. So schools, for example, open in the afternoon where students can work in the school and supported by teachers. That is quite common. And if you're a teacher in Japan, you would spend almost eight hours per week on those kinds of activities. Uh, sort of this is social support directly. But the other thing is to uh, strengthen the relationship and the involvement of the, the social background, the family income. And you can see the same in the Philippines, where you have parents who are interested in their children's learning Results are much better, and uh, the impact of parents' interest in children's learning is much stronger than the impact of family income on learning outcomes, like in other countries. So, one thing schools can do is directly take on social responsibilities, and I think that is more and more the case. But the other thing schools can do is to simply find ways to engage parents in the school life, not when there are problems. You know, not just call the parent when there's something wrong, because then the parent will always take a defensive stance, but to engage them on a regular basis. Again, you know, when you go to China, for example, 
and parents will receive about three, four pictures of their children in school through the social media. So there's a constant effort on the school to make sure that parents are part of this journey of their children. Mr. Andres, you mentioned earlier that uh, uh, the growth mindset in the Philippines is only half of what uh, uh, the OC OECD uh, presents. Uh, and this has a tremendous impact on the performance. How, this is a mindset. No? So how, how do you change? Uh, can you give, cite us some examples on how do you change this type of mindset? Because the mindset is also partly cultural. You know, in, in, uh, so have you seen any uh, high-performing countries that have changed over time this mindset? Yeah, I think you raise a very important point. You know, uh, first of all, again, if students don't have a growth mindset, they're unlikely to invest effort. If you believe success in mathematics is about your genes, then why would you study hard? You cannot change those outcomes, no? So I think it's very, very important to invest in this. And yes, we have very good evidence that you can actually change that mindset of students at the individual level and at the aggregate level. We actually do not find much evidence that this is a cultural phenomenon because even in the same kind of cultural context, you have countries uh, with a strong growth mindset and countries with a weak growth mindset. Uh, to give you some example of what you can do in a school context, uh, to give uh, students as a teacher the sense that if they invest the effort, there will be improvement in their performance to find you know, good ways of tracking individual student learning outcomes and to see, help students see not only you, know, you are not ranked very well in the class, but here is the progress that you have achieved by investing effort. It requires a very strong you know, individual relationship with, with the teacher. We survey that in PISA, we ask students, for example, do you think that your teacher knows what you can do? That's where the growth mindset starts. Does your teacher support you when you need help, that you feel actually, you know, you get some kind of uh, teacher level support? So, yes, I think we have very strong evidence that this is not fixed, but that you can actually change that mindset through the aspirations that you have. The approach of mastery learning that is very dominant in actually many of your neighbors is a very powerful way of, uh, of basically changing this attitude. Basically, mastery learning means that you set the same ambitions for all students, the same expectations. You never lower the expectation if a student comes from disadvantage or you know, from rural areas, and you will keep the expectations the same for all students, but you recover your effort when the student needs more help. So basically, you, you have more time for the students, you get more extra support. Uh, that's what those education systems do. They but they, they will never level down the standards. The moment where you lower your expectations for a student, you send the students a signal that they're not good enough, and there's nothing they can do about it. So tracking students, and streaming students, and stratifying students, those are devices that actually work against the growth mindset. The policies in favor of the growth mindset are ones that you have universal high expectations, and tailorized individual support. More time, you know, more attention, more, so that every student knows there's no tolerance for failure in the system. Again, tolerance for failure works against growth mindset, and there is a lot of individual support that students really need it. Uh, yes, uh, the secretary also has a question or some comments, uh, Mr. Andres. Uh, I would like, your honors, thank you very much. Uh, hello, Andreas. Um, I don't think, um, I'm right now, we have had uh, dialogues, conversations uh, with Andreas on two occasions uh, in the uh, Global Teachers Award Conference in Dubai. And only recently, and in London, my undersecretary also presented a critique of, of the PISA examination, and I have we have been uh, uh, having uh, dialogues on. Sorry, on the sound is very low. I cannot hear you at the moment. I'm saying that uh, we had raised some concerns about PISA uh, when we met in a panel discussion in Dubai 
uh, on the Global Teachers um, Award uh, uh, events. And also recently, just this month, my undersecretary uh, of education uh, was in London and was also a reactor to the presentation of, of PISA, and we have expressed also our observations. What I'm interested more is in um, reacting to the uh, question of uh, uh, Honorable Senator Aimee about the role of the parents. Uh, from the time that the results of PISA in the Philippines have come out, we have resolved to visit the high-performing schools uh, in the different regions because we can learn from them. Uh, for example, we have uh, two uh, schools, public high schools, whose scores have exceeded or those even of the OEC average. Mm -hmm. so because we're talking here of a mean average for the entire country, but we also have high performing schools. Now, uh, Senator Aimee was asking about the role of the parents. Only last weekend, I was in Baguio. I visited uh, the Baguio City National High School, which has a very high score, uh, score also in reading. And um, we talked with the teachers and the students, and your observations confirm uh, what we thought, because when they shared their strategies in um, encouraging or improving the capacity of the children, because one wonders why Baguio, for example, and uh, aside from the weather, of course, and uh, the, the secret appears to be in the involvement of the parents. And, and this confirms uh, the observation of Senator Marcos as to the role of the parents. Uh, in Baguio City, um, parents are, are very involved and, and really are drawn into the educational activities uh, of the children. Um, then you also have uh, Pasig City Science High School, uh, uh, which score is uh, also higher than the OECD average. So the, the, the picture in the Philippines appears to be a reflection of what not only the educational system is, but uh, the social, the economic, and the political framework within which the educational process takes place. We talk about inequality, we talk about financial support, we talk about uh, um, cultural or attitudinal issues which children, learners, observe uh, in the adults themselves. Um, so uh, we are learning from this. And, and we have expressed very clearly, if you will recall, we had a conversation during the panel discussion and after the panel discussion in Dubai, wherein I, I uh, articulated uh, our, our position at the time that we were very hesitant to participate in the PISA uh, exercise because one, we felt that ranking may not necessarily, uh, uh, does not necessarily uh, mean that countries are exactly alike and are comparable, one country. Uh, because th this is a very common uh, activity internationally and also we also said that we know and we fear that results will always be politicized. Whatever the results are, the results will be politicized. I said this in Dubai, and we repeated this in London, also in January. And, and then you, you encouraged us. We have been talking also with other countries, Singapore, Thailand, Indonesia, and we have ex uh, uh, exchanged uh, experiences, and we decided to participate in PISA because we thought, we believe, and we still believe that we can get a lot of information, data, and insights from outside of the Philippines. Because we know that we have an entire range of poor performing schools, poor performing students, but also very high performing students. And as I was saying, the two schools which exceed the OECD average are public 
high schools. And uh, for example, Regional Science High School for Region 6 is in the Visayas. Region 7 is also high performing. We have to learn why, for example, Region 7 is performing uh, better than perhaps 